Do you think he really considered going to gangrene? Considered? Well, I take Tony at his word. I'm, I'm not going to think oh, Tony. Oh, please. Well, he, l listen. The In fact, with that team? if there's a theme on this show through the year 2016 and 17 is listen. Listen, he said, I took a look. Does that mean he considered them? It probably means he took a glance over at the New York Jets, <laughs> waved his hand in front of his face, and walked away as quickly as possible. Yes, that's not going to be a good fit for me, the New York Jets. And by the way, it probably should have been a mutual feeling. The New York Jets should be in total and utter reboot, reboot, uh, reboot mode, and we know that they are. They now are. We see that getting rid of Eric Decker and putting Matt Forte on the block and doing everything they can do to get everyone over the age of 30 out of the building. Bringing a 37-year-old quarterback, no matter how good he is, probably wasn't the right answer for the New York Jets. But, yeah, I take Tony at his word. He took a look. He didn't say. In fact, he said, I'm not going to tell you if they're one of my top four teams, which I think is a clear indication that they weren't. And who we ought to be focusing on is those four teams. Why aren't the Denver Broncos being mentioned? Why aren't the Houston Texans being mentioned? Championship windows are short, Denver. Championship windows are short, Houston. Well, why would a championship contender consider Tony Romo? You've I got, don't understand. <laughs> I really don't get it. You've why got would that the happen? number one defense <laughs> in the league in Denver. You've got the number six defense of the league, Houston, that you're going to probably entrust to a rookie quarterback. Perhaps Tom Savage keeps that job for a little while. Trevor Simeon, we know, can keep Denver in the 9-7 and seven range. But you will burn through your championship window with, yes, passing up on what would be, even at the age of 37, even in 2017, a top-10 quarterback in the NFL. Undoubtedly so. <laughs> <laughs> Undoubtedly so. That is That's hilarious. That is absolutely like. There's a funny. Here's the funny part. Now, now, Will left that he omitted the most important thing. First of all, Tony Romo was never considering going anywhere else because he didn't want to leave the crib. You understand? Because he's treated like such a baby, the adopted child of Jerry Jones. He didn't want to leave the comforts of that little crib called Jerry World and, 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 and Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys because nowhere else with the level of ineptitude that he displayed would it be tolerated. Not to this level. The love affair would be gone. The apologist would be non-existent. You would look at him and think about two playoffs victories in nine years. You wouldn't sit up there and pay attention to the numbers and talk about the pass and accuracy and all that stuff. You think about those big moments he didn't come through. You think about the absence of playoff victories. You think about a franchise that has been associated with greatness and championships, and then he came along, even though there were others that came along a little bit before him, the Quincy Jones of the world and others. But for the most part, the stars that were arrived, the Troy Aikmans of the world, the Roger Starbucks of the world, hell, even the Danny Whites of the world, they were all better than Tony Romo. And in the end, what it comes down to is that he, he, he had come to New York City, the Big Apple, you understand, where, where the Max Kellermans and Stephen A. Smiths are waiting for him, along with the rest of this media contingent, he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it at all. That's why he ran straight to that damn booth. Because he, if he had just, come just, to New just, York, just to be clear, okay, and just, wasn't getting it done, it would have been the end for him.